Assalamu alaikum, alaikum, greetings of peace. How are you, my friend? Salam, how are you? Alhamdulillah, how you been? Good to see you. Good to see you too. Always it a pleasure. It seems you have been eating some vegetables lately. Oh, we were just talking about that. Yeah, yes. good. Thank you. You too, also. Mm-hmm. Number one genocide. The only genocide that's happening here in the world. We don't hear much about it. Why is that? I don't know, but uh, Rohingya people are indigenous people living in their ancestral land in Burma. And uh, they are just being uh, killed, slaughtered, thrown out of their homes. 284 villages have been burned to ashes in 15 days. How many? 284 in 15 days. By now, it is more than 400. For the average Westerner, people who um, they probably never heard, Burma, can you give us a little bit of a... a, a a picture where where is this at is by china burma and myanmar Myanmar. are uh, in southeast asia yes Uh, north to that is china and uh, west to that is bangladesh and on east is thailand Uh and how long has this genocide been happening well it has been a slow burning genocide for years but now they are going for the final solution and uh, uh, you know, majority of Rohingyas are no longer in their land. They have been thrown out. Mm-hmm. Now, you actually, you just came back from there recently, is that right? Yes, I recently came back. This was my second trip to the area. and uh, It's not that easy to get in there, I heard. Well, uh, you know, getting inside Burma is almost impossible now to that area. It's not just hard, it's impossible, but right. you made it inside. Right. No, I did not make it inside no? the Burma. I cannot go there. They will just uh, throw me in the jail as soon yeah. as they get hold of me. How close did you make it? I went to the border from the Bangladesh side. Mm-hmm. That's where the refugees are. Uh, there are almost a million refugees at this moment. They are very religious people, very practicing people. You rarely find any woman who doesn't have her head covered. They are very religious people. And they were very self-reliant people. They were living off their land. They were not dependent on anybody. The government uh, took away their citizenship in 1982. And because of that, they cannot enter a school. They cannot go to a clinic. uh, They cannot have a job. So they were living off land, uh, their own land. And they were not dependent on anybody. Suddenly. There are a million people who are dependent on the world to give them food. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are still want to work, but work is not allowed. They are just sitting in these camps and uh, next to each other, barely from one. Uh, and, and these are not proper tents, as you see in Syrian crisis and all that. They just cut the hill, wood from the hill, and put the stick up there and put some plastic at the top of it or some sheet. That's that's where how they're living, and they put uh, you know roots of the tree uh, to dry up so they can cook with it. So they are very self-reliant people. So I saw a lot of their huts have uh, not lot. I mean more than Chicago. Every hundred home or so home I'm seeing huts, bamboo huts, bamboo yeah. and plastic huts. I will see a little bit of small. Uh, you know, solar panel. I said, wow, these guys are way advanced in Chicago. So it turned out the government will have electricity for the Buddhist Burmese, but in the same village they will not let have electricity Muslims have. So Muslim went into solar panel business. And <laughs> so that's how they have been surviving. So while running away, some of them were able to pick up their little, it's very small solar panel, one foot by one foot, and mm-hmm. they, they just brought with them. Tell us about some of the people you met. You met some um, the only surviving imams. Yes, there is a, <clears throat> while I was meeting people, I keep meeting people who have horrible story to tell from a, a village called Tula Tuli. Mm-hmm. T-U-L-I, Tuli, T-O-L-I. So I say, what is happening in Tula Tuli? I say, what? So people were saying half of the old people were murdered and a lot of women were raped, including young girls. So I said, did you have any leaders? He said, oh yeah, former chair of our village council is here. I said, take me to him. So I spoke to him. Then uh, I met another former chair of uh, Tilatoli. And I learned that, uh, you know, as the villages were being burned all around, uh, they were assured by the current chair 
who is a Buddhist Burmese that, okay, don't worry, nothing will happen to you. Worse come worse, uh, they will burn your houses, but you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. So people were running around all around, but these people stayed trusting that mayor. And uh, guess what? 8 a.m. on August 30th, uh, helicopters landed and they came attacking and killing. They killed the separated men and women, uh, killed men and boys and women. They asked them to sit 8 a.m. until 3, 4 p.m. in water, just head up. And then they came out. They will take five girls and five soldiers. They will take them to temple and rape them. And uh, so while talking here and there, I said, did you have any mom? She said, oh, yes, we had an imam. Uh, so I met the imam. So it turned out there were five masjid and five imams, and four of them were murdered. He's the only one who survived. The way he survived was that they were, uh, some of them were doing a meeting at a watchtower to watch out what's going on, and that's where the attack began. So they were able to find out and ran, and since military came from the north, they were in the south, they were able to save their families as well. Now, we know that after World War II, one of the greatest, the greatest genocide that happened, you were actually a part <coughs> of helping bring, a, uh, creating awareness to that. You did a lot of great work for the um, situation in Bosnia. That was, a, you know, just a horrific, you know, ethnic cleansing that was happening there. And now, it seems like we have another great genocide happening. happening again. And the world is, what is, what's the world doing? Yes. Situation is worse than Bosnia in some ways. You know, in Bosnia, uh, more people probably were killed. Mm -hmm. uh, but one common thing is rape. In Bosnia, I remember 50,000 Muslim Bosnian women were raped. Yes. And I remember sitting in the, uh, I have daughters, God has blessed me with three daughters. I was sitting in room, in their room, as they were little girls at that time, and I was crying, thinking of those sisters in Bosnia. So I launched a campaign actually uh, in America, got all Muslim organizations together, and then we aligned ourselves with National Organization of Women. And we have marches and demonstration in 100 cities. And we got rape declared a war crime, and many people have been punished since. In Burma situation, that's their main weapon. They use it as an actual weapon. A actually as a weapon. And that's how they do, do it. I mean, it's not just some soldier got crazy and he did anything like that. It's nothing like that. It's a very planned method. And that's how they do it. United Nations surveyed, and they say 52% of all women they surveyed, Rohingya women, have been raped. How they do it? They uh, will go, for example, in one case, they will just pick up girls and take it to mosque, and they rape them in the mosque, while soldiers are having guns uh, towards all the villagers. So villagers hear all of that, right? Their, their babies and their girls crying. As young as six-year-old, brother, I met 13-year-old, I met 14-year-old, who got everybody in the family killed, and she got raped. So when they hear this, they say, oh, run from here, because Muslim honor their women. And everybody does, but Muslim have extraordinary uh, importance uh, given to that, uh, to all sexual violence. So, so people ran because of that. Other places, uh, they will uh, go in the village, just pick up a girl and rape. And once this happened for a few months, they'll say, oh, what in the world is going on? I met a, a girl in, uh, in Indonesia through the boat she arrived, and I said, you know, why did you leave? He said, my parents sold everything and put me on boat. And he said, alone by yourself? And she will not answer me. She'll just look down. So a person next to her say, you know, the reason is that these soldiers will come every week here and there and just barge into the home and rape her. So parents wanted her to at least be free from that slavery. So they are using rape as a weapon to, of genocide, so people can run away from their homes. And who exactly is doing this? Military. The military. Mainly military. The, what do you call it, the uh, Burmese military? Yeah, you can call it Burmese military. They have another name for it, but yeah. Burmese military is a good way of saying it. And you have, to them, there's a religion connected to it. We obviously, we don't blame a religion, 
like people try to blame Islam, but they are connected. There's some extremist monk. The, the difference is that there's no one extremist monk. There are a whole lot of extremist monks. Who are Bud Buddhists. They are Buddhist. Yes. And uh, one extremist monk, for example, they're giving theological justification. They're saying that, oh, you know, they got this philosophy of people are born again and things like that. Yeah. So they say Muslims actually are not uh, human beings. They were insects. So when you're killing them, you're not killing human beings, you're killing insects. This is one theology. Now that is considered extremist monk, but now the most respected, highly regarded Buddhist monk, who is currently visiting America, by the way, uh, he lecturing the uh, military officers. American military? No, no, the uh, Buddhist uh -huh. officers in Burma. In Burma? They are all sitting on the floor. He's sitting on the stage all by himself. Yeah. He's telling them killing non uh, killing non Buddhist uh, is not a crime. It's okay. Yeah. And he's giving theological justification. See, in Islam, that's a crime. It's clearly. Oh yeah. A crime. I that mean, there are some text. Muslim commit crimes, but, uh, but that, they the don't change the theology. Yeah. But but you would hear. Imagine if the if the situation was reversed now. Right, you yeah. see th these double standards happening. Why do you have? So you mentioned now uh, these uh, commanders, these in the military. This is something that they're they're propagating and they're using their religion, Buddhism, to go ahead and and not some freak uh, groups like ISIS type, which is a isolated group, but they are the whole military, the mainstream people, mainstream, not mainstream a fringe element. monks are telling the main army that it's okay to kill. Wow. That's and they are on record. This is on video, by the way. <laughs> you can Google it. And mm -hmm. the guy is visiting America. He was in San, uh, Los Angeles a week ago, went to Minnesota. Now he's in Austin, uh -huh. coming to America on a full visa to preach Buddhism to the Buddhist here, while he is on record just two months ago preaching that it's okay to kill non-Buddhists. And he got the visa, he got the he okay. He got the visa and everything. Uh, probably nobody knows that how horrible this person is. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that's why some of us are writing to State Department. What's his name? Uh, Sitgo, Sitgo, S Sitgo, something like that. What's the other main monk that they had him on the time? Rathu, Rathu. Yeah. He is the uh, number one uh, preacher of hate. I think military controls him. Uh, one of his, uh, I met one of his uh, friend who's a Muslim, that m preacher. And that Muslim guy, uh, he's a refugee, and he became refugee because uh, that hitmonger told him it's not a good time for you to be here, you better get out of the country. Mm -hmm. He says that he doesn't used to be that bad. But military took uh, control of his monastery, and uh, Buddhist monastery, women are not, allow not allowed to stay inside the monastery. You know, at night, n there'll be no women in the monastery. Mm -hmm. Except in his monastery, there's a woman. And that woman gives him injections and whatnot. So he thinks that military somehow is controlling this monk to continue to do uh, the dirty propaganda. But that guy, people knew, is extremist. We're talking Sitago, which is the number one monks of that country, who is saying based on the Buddhist theology or whatever interpretation he came up with, it's okay to kill non-Buddhist. It's okay to pr pretty much kill anyone who's not a part of Buddhism. Yep. Muslims in particular now in this area. Of course, he's addressing Wh the military. A military officer is sitting in front of him. Yeah. He's justifying them in case they have some guilty conscience. Uh, of killing Muslim is justifying them. It's okay to kill non-Muslim. Non Where is the Buddhist world? Is the Buddhist world speaking up? Well, uh, there are some people who are speaking up. The Dalai Lama have spoken out. American Buddhist community, meaning people who are convert to Buddhism in America, they have been good allies of Burma Task Force. I am chair of Burma Task Force USA, and we have been working on this uh, to stop the genocide for five years. So they they are good allies. They have been speaking out against them, and I. Recently, I was speaking at Roosevelt University on this topic. <coughs> a Buddhist stood up and he started uh, sharing the teachings of Buddha that this is wrong. And it reminded me of Muslim trying to use Quran to tell what ISIS is doing wrong. So they are unfortunately on defensive, although it's none of their fault. But in Burma right now, all lay people, political government and military, all on the same page. They don't believe anything wrong is going on over there while the rest of the world is crying what is going on. 
but rest of the world unfortunately not is stopping this genocide some lunatic he lets off a pipe bomb and he's somehow connected to even though he's going doing opposite to Islam it's all over mainstream media and you know there's a big frenzy and then we've like you talked about before Muslims it's one of the almost like if there's six pillar it would be you know we become professional condemners right yes so now what are you seeing you're on the ground what are you seeing as far as the media like we hear a little bit here and there but where is the the world globally are they hearing about one of the natural problem with america is that whatever happens in america we think that's the main story uh, whatever happens in the world is a very secondary if not <laughs> below that uh, so media is covering here and there what is happening in mm-hmm. terms of genocide but it's not going on that case because who are these people far away people muslim to begin with so you demonize muslim so much that anybody killing muslims is okay type of a business uh of course the trump administration which regularly speaks uh, himself against muslims and the muslim community and now he says that uh, islamists and uh, chinese are the ma- the most important threat to america i mean china got guns who, who are muslims they, they they're buying guns from america don't sell them <laughs> period yeah <laughs> i will if so, so they say a fear of islam would justifies these type of things so when i see what uh, what muslims in burma are accused of they are the same thing they accuse of muslims in america the only difference is with thank god we have law and order and if somebody attacks us they get arrested in burma it's okay to say anything do anything and you will always get away What's the, yeah that's my next question what's the justification behind that because you know usually there's some picture that's painted there's something that's propagated and to pump people up so you had you you mentioned one thing about the the actual uh, uh, justification oh, from the religious they're trying, text they're saying they're trying to take over burma well muslims are not more than uh, more than a couple of percent but how they're going to take over the country uh, muslims have no army of their own in burma there are five groups Christians and Buddhists who are fighting the Burmese government with guns how many groups at least 5 yeah. used to be uh, you know in principle there are about 20 yeah. but five are main groups fighting Burmese government with guns they are not called terrorist these rohingyas are called terrorist who are peacefully begging please give our citizenship back to us so Rohingya people have an option follow what other uh, Burmese are doing fight with the government fight with the military who is killing them they are so peaceful they have chosen okay now we just want our citizenship back they are not asking for country they are not asking to do anything else they say just let us live in our location you know they are indigenous people living in their ancestral land is just let us live so there are people without a citizenship and without a home without a land they were citizens and they got their it taken away citizenship was taken away and actually the last uh, muslim used to be members of the parliament in burma brother yeah. actually the last member of the parliament who retired just in 2015 is sitting right here in Ch- in us so there are people without a citizenship and without a land now yeah well, of all their land all their mosque everything is destroyed so where are they at they have them in concentration camps well there are two places genocide is going on in B- burma so they have taken them about uh, 200000 are in those concentration camps uh, where hardly any food is given uh, about 100 to 200000 are running around or in villages which still have not been attacked but they keep attacking last two weeks they have atta- attacked and destroyed 20 villages so they are just sitting dock at this moment and they cannot run to bangladesh because the main route to bangladesh they have mined them so people go through they get blasted mm-hmm. so the only route it they go further south on the sea and luckily somebody can pick up nobody is picking them up i recently saw photos they have taken bamboos and put some plastic bottles milk bottles to it and <laughs> they are floating on it for 4 miles so many of them are drowning what about the the prime was it the prime minister there she actually won the nobel peace prize is that right what yeah, she, she what what she say and doing she is not even a prime minister she is called the uh, some senior councilor and uh, because uh, by law she is prohibited from becoming a uh, a prime minister because the military ro- before they allowed quote unquote democracy they changed the constitution 
and in that constitution everything is designed for military to keep control in their hand so military for example uh, there is a clause in the constitution that military can do anything you cannot try military in any court in burma or outside burma <laughs> mm -hmm. so and and they control the military they control the uh, most of the thing interior border and things of this nature so she is uh, essentially a collaborator she doesn't have much power but she has a power to resign she is not resigning <laughs> so it means she is responsible for it tell us more you are on the ground there you um you weren't able to get in why won't they let they, they don't they don't uh, allow media in the place they don't allow even united nations inside that area where genocide is being committed the united nations has developed a committee uh, to investigate they are not giving visa to that committee to investigate actually when they started this major war uh, major killing and genocide which i consider to be final solution on august 25th they have been building up for a couple of months a month and a half before they kick out the united nation all the uh, non governmental organization who were providing help and relief they were all kicked out before they started this operation so it was well planned by the military wow what else uh, have you seen on the ground there? Share any other experiences? Brother, the situation is terrible uh, for people who are living there and uh, they need a whole lot of help. Uh, and this help cannot be given by, you know, you and me giving a dollar here and a dollar there. Uh, it's, a, it's a magnitude in which governments need to do more. I mean, I had a speaking last Sunday in Cleveland and Doctors Without Borders, one of their member board of directors, who ju also she just came back after serving two months in Bangladesh, she's a midwife. And she was saying that she has been to six or seven conflict zone. She said, I have never seen anything like that ever, anywhere. So people are in terrible shape. It's a very tiny, very uh, narrow uh, type of an island and there are a million people sitting there, a couple of millions were already residents of that area. There is a one tiny road uh, which goes through that area and it is always clogged because the well-meaning Bangladeshi Muslim bringing things for them and everybody. So what they need is I think something which I pleaded for Haiti and it happened, they need 10 helicopters, 20 transport helicopters. So they take it food from the airport and they deliver it to multiple distribution point. Now people sit there for almost uh, two third of the day to get food and ration, and that's not enough. And uh, because of rape, there are a lot of unwanted pregnancies and uh, different things. 80% uh, of the people there are women and children. Men were either killed or they're in prison or somewhere. So more distribution, more aid, airlift, uh, transport helicopters, that will alleviate the situation. But the worst scenario is that China and India, India is emerging as a real enemy of Muslim. I mean, uh, China is communist and all that, but uh, they are supportive of Myanmar, but they are not emerging as enemies of Muslim, but India is emerging as enemies of Muslim. These two countries are forcing uh, Bangladesh to just throw these people back to Myanmar. Back to where? I mean, genocide is happening right there. There is still coming into Bangladesh and you want them to start going back. So when I was there uh, uh, until uh, November 29th or 30th, they were distributing farms for people to fill in and go back. Go back where? Which land? Which property? They're going to take them to concentration camp. They shouldn't go. Nobody should be forced to go unless uh, their citizenship is restored. So their rights are at least theoretically restored. They get their property, their land, and their houses back or get compensation for it. And there is some force. Either uh, create a force out of uh, Rohingya people, uh, train them in, the, uh, in defending themselves so they are there, or send the United Nations, or send the Bangladesh Army, or maybe the Bangladesh and the Myanmar Army together safeguard people. Because they have done this in 78, 91, 95, 2012, 2016, 2017. They keep doing that. And then these people go back, go back to restart their life from ground zero. What is ground zero for them? No house, nothing. No education. No job. 
no land to do what what type of humanity is this i mean this is the first genocide brother which is well documented through satellite before and after they have photos of before after before and after you can see all of that oh, yeah, satellite yeah this is yeah. available online so there is no genocide in the world history which is as well documented as this one except those people who say never again are just sitting idle on their seats saying they need to say mm. you know never again is happening again let's do something to stop it never again is happening again never again is happening and again and people are just letting it happen yep. in real time people real time live under the satellite eyes mm. and those images are printed everywhere yeah if people want to get a hold of you if they want to um try to do their part uh, yes burma task force.org mm -hmm. burma task force.org or they can go to burma muslims.org and we two things you can do sign up we issue action alert that every week you could do one or 10 minute 15 minute and there are things which you can do which are effective and for this cause if you want to donate you can donate there we're working to stop the genocide we are doing that for 5 years now they're coming to final solution and this is the time for people who care for humanity who care for their daughters who care for aisha and uh, and maria and maryam and fatima this is the time for you to realize you need to stand up america gives us rights we can take a stand we can contact our congress persons we can contact our senators the and and there are bills in senate and the house uh, which we are trying to push and uh, people are listening but the thing is are we are enough of us are standing up yeah thank you so much may god almighty allah reward you for your efforts and the uh, wonderful work you're doing thank you for sharing your thank experience you. with thank you for thank you much.